do level two today. We're going to do some more questions because we did the topic card already. And I've changed my setup so you can see my microphone is right here. Hopefully that means I, I can type better without hitting the microphone or having the microphone in the way. You can also see Domokun in the back. Everybody loves Domokun. Okay, so we are on grade two. Question, I'm trying to find a smooth way to do everything. And so the first thing is, I was before, I was reading the sentence and then doing the vocabulary. It's almost impossible not to read the sentence first, but I'm going to try to just do the vocabulary and then put the best word into the sentence. So let's try that. So our first word is illustrated. There are two ways I can think of how to use this. The book was illustrated with beautiful pictures. That is too big. Only because it's moving when I, so it's maybe 26. Maybe there. I'm trying to make the, the words big so that they're easier to see. Maybe if people are watching on their phone, it's very difficult to find the right balance. If you're going to watch this, I, I know it's not convenient, but I actually would recommend watching it on your computer so that you can see the question and the explanation I do. The book was illustrated with beautiful pictures. The book, beautiful drawings, beautiful pictures, so let's make this, of animals, had beautiful drawings of animals. So illustrated just means pictures. And in this case, it's pictures to make it easier to understand what the book is talking about. He illustrated his point perfectly. He explained his point perfectly. He gave perfect examples for his point. Okay, so in this case, so illustrated very directly is to make a picture. But what is the picture supposed to do? The picture is supposed to make it easier to understand what you were reading. In this second point, he illustrated his point perfectly. I've used two one. He explained and he gave perfect examples, but the idea is the same. He's explaining his point He's, he's giving examples to make what he's saying easier to understand so people can understand it more easily. So he illustrated his point. Oh, I might as well write the sentence. He illustrated his point by telling us a story from his childhood. Move that down so it's on the same page. So the story from his childhood helps you understand what he is saying better. So if you watch TED Talks or something like that, they will say what they're talking about. They will say, I think climate change is a big problem. And they then will give you examples. They are trying to illustrate how climate change is a big problem. Reminded. The picture reminded me of when I was young. So now that I've made the first sentence, the second sentence has kind of the same feeling, the same theme. It's remembering things. For the picture reminded me of when I was young. But the picture made, made me remember a time 
from my childhood. Okay? So reminded me just means it makes you think of something from before. My reminded. Because I was about to say to remind. My wife left me a note to remind me to buy some milk. It's a pretty common sentence. To remind, but this is not remind because it's not past tense. Oh, that's actually not past tense. It reminded me means it prompted me to remember something. To a note. To remind me to get some milk. Okay, so that's important. To remind is the verb. To tell... Uh, my wife left me a note so I wouldn't for, forget to get some milk. Okay, so the note is to tell me to get some milk. That's on purpose. It reminded me means it makes me think of something else. I saw a girl that reminded me of of my first girl friend I saw a girl that looked like there's no need for a comma there it looked like my first girlfriend hmm <clears throat> something like that it doesn't have to be look though. So I saw a girl that looked like, cause maybe just, it was the feeling, the atmosphere, uh, the way she laughed made me think of my first girlfriend. So actually this second sentence, I'm not very happy with. I saw a girl And something about her. So not just the way she looks. Made me think of my first girlfriend. So this could be anything. This could be the way she looks. The way she speaks the way she walks or moves any of those things could remind me of my first girlfriend okay and then proceeded i bought my ticket and then pro seated into the theater. We're going to use American spelling. If I'm I'm Canadian, so I often would write that. Both are okay. People make a big deal out of spelling. If you're in America, yes, you should spell it the American way. If you're in Canada or the UK or Australia, you should probably spell it their way. I bought my ticket. And then went into theater. So all proceeded which means I have done A. After I have done the first thing, then I can do the next thing. I was trying to walk with a sore knee and pro seated very slowly. That's not a great sentence, but it's okay. I was trying to walk with a sore knee and moved very slowly. So in this case, proceed means do A 
and then B. And then this one is just how fast I'm moving. Proceed is to go. But usually we would use it, I think, for proceeded to do is after you do something else. So I got my food and then I proceeded to go to the table. I got something and then I proceeded to do something else. I got the login information and then proceeded to use my computer. Well, that's actually quite good. So let's do that one. I'm very happy when I impress myself with my own English. Formation and then... Because I can't use the computer until I already have the information to log in, to get to open up the computer. Okay. Let's get on defended. A lot of words like this, they can be used two or three ways. But like there's a lot of fighting words. But then we always have fighting words, actual, physical, and then sort of verbal. So the army defended the country from an attack. So this is very literal. The army fought people who were trying To stop people who are trying to attack the country. I defended my daughter from an angry dog. I fought physically a dog to stop it from hurting my daughter. So that was when I'm really using my body. So in the first case, we're talking about the army. The army is going to shoot guns, fly airplanes, tanks, all the things an army does to stop people trying to attack a city or a country. I'm in Japan. <laughs> so I immediately start thinking of Godzilla. The army defended the country from an attack and then I could put by Godzilla. The army fought to stop Godzilla from trying to hurt the country. And then just on a personal level, just me, I defended my daughter from an angry dog. So a dog tried to hurt my daughter. So I had to fight it with my fists or my body to try to stop it from hurting her. But we can also do it emotionally or verbally. Emotionally is not quite right. You can defend people emotionally. Stopping someone from saying something bad. Uh, the next time would be like in a court case. My lawyer defended me. My lawyer defended me from the accusation. This is another difficult word. My lawyer defended me from the accusation of damaging my boss's car. No, my, not my boss. Your boss isn't going to sue you. You're going to work it out. Damaging the other person's car. So two cars have, so a car has been damaged and this person says, you did it, Peter from Sounds Great English. I'm saying, no, I didn't. He goes to court and he gets a lawyer and I get a lawyer and my lawyer defends me. Now, he doesn't fight the other guy. He tries to protect me or save me using his words. My, delay, my lawyer spoke for me to argue that I hadn't damaged the other person's car. Okay, so it just I just have to make it very clear. A lot of these words, like we say in English, we say fight. 
there are two ways to fight. You can fight physically. I practice judo, so I go to vit judo and I and I throw people and people throw me. We're actually fighting. And then maybe I fight with my wife. If I say that, people think, oh, did you grab your wife and throw your wife? No, I say things, she says things, and we have an argument. But it's because it's used two ways. It just means two people disagree, and it could be verbal or it could be physical. All right, let's read the sentence. So now we have the definitions of our four words. The St. Patrick's Day Parade started on 10th Avenue and illustrated slowly, so slowly is movement, that's very important, to the center of town. Illustrated, like I said, drawing pictures or explaining an idea. The parade isn't going to do that. The parade's going to move. Reminded? The parade could remind me of another parade or something else. For like, the, the parade reminded me of a train that I saw. So they're moving by very slowly. The train moved very slowly. It reminds me of the train. But that's not what's happening here. The, the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade started on 10th of it and moved. So I think in this case, we're going to have to use proceeded. The St. Patrick's Day Parade started on 10th Avenue and proceeded slowly to the center of town. All right, let's do the next one. So again, I'm going to try to do carriages. Uh, carriages. I don't use the word carriages very much, if I'm being honest. The train had 15 carriages. That's actually not even right, because it's 15 cars. Yeah. Carriage. Because a carriage. Let's get some pictures. There. That's a carriage. The princess is in the carriage. That's uh, that picture up. So that is a carriage. It's a horse-drawn car. It's... Horses pull. Horse drawn means horses pull. Actually, I should write all this vocabulary down. Again, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do this. Do I write down everything I say? Or is it just me explaining it enough and you can listen to it? So these are carriages. We don't use carriages anymore. So I that's why I'm having trouble thinking of a word for carriages. I think sometimes they call it a carriage on a train. But in, Eng in American English we say a train car. So anyways, the princess went to the ball. So this is Snow White in a white carriage. I wonder why it's plural. I guess it has to, they're all plural for the word. <laughs> there were 10 carriages that took the princesses. <laughs> okay, I'm going to change the sentence just to make sure it's plural. 10 carriages took 10 princesses to the ball. <laughs> it's very silly, actually. 10 so again, how do I call it? Because this is a carriage. We would actually say horse-drawn carriages. Ten vehicles pulled by horses. So I've actually said horse-drawn a couple of times. In this case, drawn means to pull. Ten vehicles pulled by horses carried. Four says... Carried the princesses to the party. I can't think of another way to use carriages right now. I'm sure there's some vehicles and they would call the part that uh, you sit in a carriage. But if we just go back to this picture, these are all carriages. There's a, that's a beautiful carriage. It's gold and black. But you need horses to pull it. So let me just put the phrase up here. So the one I said. Uh, horse drawn pulled carriage. 
So because this is a horse-drawn carriage, I guess there are other kinds, like you could have another carriage pulled by something else, but I've only ever seen horses do it. And again, this is a kind of old way to travel. I don't think people use carriages anymore. Uh, if you go to Canada, you go to a city called Victoria. They do have a tour around the city, and you can sit in a horse-drawn carriage. It's very exciting for some people, not me, because horses smell bad. Horses are very nice. Fantasies. I wish they weren't using plural, but okay, anyways, fantasy. He spent all day not listening to his teacher having fantasies about being in space. There you go. So he wants to be like a space hero. And instead of listening to his teacher, he's sitting there going, ah, oh, and then I would fly my spaceship. He's having a good time in his mind. He spent all day not listening to his teacher, having daydreams, thinking about adventures in space that's pretty good having daydreams about adventures in space or thinking about adventures in space he's not listening uh, he's having dreams he's having dreams about things that could happen to him in his life it's very exciting puzzles Games that have puzzles are very popular. That doesn't tell you much. <laughs> it's because puzzles is very hard to, this is like carriages. Puzzles is very hard to use in a different way. A puzzle is something you have to figure out. Now, that sentence is no good. A puzzle. So uh, puzzle games, what I was just thinking, you have to match three, you have to solve a problem. Uh, there's a game called Wordle. And it gives you, you have to choose letters and then however many letters you get right, it goes down and down and down and down. That's a puzzle. That's a word puzzle game. I'm trying to think, because there's real, there's puzzles like the physical thing you do. So you take a, it's a picture that's cut up and you put it back together. That's a puzzle. Then there's also a problem, and that could be a puzzle. And that puzzle would be just a problem you need to fix. So I work for a company. Huh. Okay, puzzle. Oh, I'm really struggling with this one. I'm struggling it because... Okay, there's the two ways. Let's do that. Let's do the two ways. There is the puzzle... A puzzle is a physical thing, and there's puzzle. It's a problem that you have to figure out with your brain. I spent my weekend putting a puzzle together. Okay. I spent my weekend putting a picture <laughs> together that was in many pieces. So I think we all know what a puzzle is. This again, maybe is why it's difficult, is because in my brain I'm thinking, oh, I have to think of a difficult way to say it. I think if you know what a puzzle is, you know what a puzzle is. But this puzzle is the physical puzzle. Uh, and again, like there are other puzzles, there are puzzle games and things like that. But you have to take something, put it together mentally. I have to... Mm, again, this is more of an idiom the way I'm thinking of it now. If I have two or three problems at work and I have to solve all the problems, I might call that like a puzzle that needs to be fixed. It's more of an idiom. It's not really the way I would use the word. I don't want to just move on. I'm not satisfied with my own explanation right now, though. This is the honest version of 
English teaching in sounds great English because if I was in a classroom, I would pretend that everything was perfect. I don't ever, you can't stop in a class and say, I'm not satisfied with my own explanation. Let me look up puzzle. Just the definition of the word. Ah, see, then it immediately goes to jigsaw puzzles and stuff. Jigsaw is the pictures with all the pieces. And then it has puzzle video game right up there. There you go. So I want dictionary definition. Well, he was puzzled. To puzzle someone is to confuse someone. So puzzles. Again, it's the plural. The plural is making this really hard for me today. I wasn't ready for plurals. This is, okay, so this is the two. Uh, let's zoom in on that. A game, toy, or problem designed to test ingenuity. Ingenuity is just how you think or knowledge. So that's the physical one or the game or something. A person or thing that is difficult to understand. An enigma. Enigma is a great word. Enigma is just something you don't understand. <laughs> They've just said the same thing twice. But again, the example sentence here is the meaning of the poem has always been a puzzle. It's always been something that's difficult to understand. If we do what I'm trying to do and use the word that they've given us, puzzles, it's very hard. I won't give up. I might have to do some hard editing to make this fit the time that I want it to fit. Uh, puzzles. Puzzles over the problem. <gasps> That's why. Because I wanted the mental one. Puzzles over the problem. He spends time thinking about how to solve the problem. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Because I was struggling so hard. I'm happy I got that one. So this one, it's the thing. I had a big picture in many pieces. I tried to put all the pictures. I had a big picture with all the pieces. I tried to put all the pieces together. I solved the puzzle. In this case, puzzle means think. He puzzles over the problem means he thinks about the problem. And then in the dictionary definition we looked at, puzzle was, it's confusing. He's a puzzle. It doesn't have the S if I use it that way. Plural. The plural is changing the meaning of the words. Uh, he is a puzzle is he is a very confusing person. I'm not going to type that into the document because that is a different word from the word on the Aiken test. All right, let's do the last one. Luxuries. The hotel had many luxuries. Like a hot tub, tub on the balcony, balcony. Oh man, the the puzzles is really it's because when I think about something previously, and then I try to type, my typing skill goes down. It's like my brain can't work and type at the same time. When I'm in a classroom. If I'm talking and writing on the whiteboard, I can't do it at the same time. My spelling skill goes down. If I'm silent, I can spell better than if I'm talking and spelling. It's because my brain is doing two things. I understand why. But it's quite sad that I can't do two things at the same time. The hotel had many luxuries, like a hot tub on the balcony, a fridge with free food and drinks, and, well, not Dirks. And what's something really expensive in a hotel? Ah, and champagne when we arrived. So in this case, luxuries are really things you do not need. So the hotel had many. Th I don't want to type all that out again. The hotel had many, you could just put extras. Uh, I was actually thinking luxuries. 
one of the best luxuries of modern cars is a seat warmer. One of the best things you don't need. <laughs> Modern cars is a seat warmer. So a luxury is something you don't need. It's extra. Uh, often a luxury would be something expensive or fancy, but it's really just extra. So if you get a hotel room, most hotel rooms have a bed. A luxury would have a special bed. Bed's not a great example. I think a hotel room has to have a bed. But like the free food. So in the example up here, maybe they'll have a fridge, but you have to pay for the fridge. A luxury would mean everything is free, probably because it's in the price of the hotel room. Uh, the champagne. But like a hot tub on the balcony... That would be a luxury. You don't need a hot tub on the balcony of your hotel room. It's extra. It's really nice. And it's very expensive. It's very expensive to put a hot tub on the balcony. Think about something that's more common. You buy a car. The car has to have a seat. <laughs> I think everyone has to sit down while they drive. You don't need a seat warmer. The seat warmer is extra. You probably paid extra for it. But it's really nice. And so that's things, you have a normal standard car and then you have a luxury car. A luxury car would have more, everything would be nicer, everything would be more expensive. And that's something to think about. And that is 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop there. We only did two questions today. I don't know if it's because I explained more or because I went slower. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. Uh, we'll be back next week. We only did two questions today, but I think you got some good explanations. You got to watch me think through the problem. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to soundsgreatenglish at gmail.com or you could leave a comment under the video and I will try to address your comments and questions. And I hope you have a great week. I think I need like a fade out with music. I think I need some music for this. A little guitar, something nice.